scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Phenomenal revelation. Phenomenal revelation. Hallelujah. Didn't have the opportunity to follow other speakers, but I was so blessed. Just the revelations that have come, that alone should be able to shift someone else. You see, the assignment of revelations is to create transitions. Revelations forbid you from remaining at the same level. Every time genuine light come, they come with a force that propels forward. Revelations do not move people backward. Are we together? It can propel a man forward. And while standing, please let's honor the angel over this house, Reverend Sam and his lovely wife. We honor you, sir, sincerely. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Jerry is left and then Apostle Opie is here. I met other incredible men and women of God. I honor everyone who has mounted this pulpit serving God's grace. The Lord bless you, ma. The Lord bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus. Please let's be seated for a few minutes. I know that our time is stretched and I do not intend to keep us longer than necessary. But just to wrap up tonight's session with a thought that was strong in my mind just like pastor jerry shared time will not allow me to do justice to the things that i've written but i just decided to pick up three important um, aspects of my notes that i just want to bring and then we'll pray i was to teach on growth and enlargement but then i believe with all my heart that that which God is going to be doing in our lives, even after today, please listen, that in the name of Jesus Christ, by next year advance, you will return a thousand times greater. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Psalm 115 verse 14, we'll just consider two scriptures, 115 and verse 14. I'd like you to read it as a prophetic word to your destiny. Are you ready? The Bible says, may the Lord give you increase more and more for you and for your children. Say amen. amen. May the Lord give you increase more and more. Hallelujah. So there are principles that are responsible for growth, excellence and flourishing at any level. And a number of them, I believe, have been considered in various forms and various fashions by the speakers. I do not intend to get into all of those discussions, especially because I'm wrapping up today's session. But I desire to share, in addition to probably all that you've heard, just three principles to connect to and connect with all that we've heard as far as the matter of growth and increase is concerned number one the first thing i want to share as a principle that supports growth and flourishing is the power of correct perception the power of correct perception jeremiah chapter one please would you give us 11 and 12 preferably from amplified jeremiah chapter one so the discussion begins from verse five the young jeremiah is discussing with god and this was a matter relating to his life, his purpose, and his destiny. And it says, while you were yet a child, while you were in your mother's womb, before you came forth, I called you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. 
by the time we get to verse 11, please, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? KJV will say, what seest thou? And then he replies by saying, I see the branch of an almond tree. Let's shout verse 12 together if you can see it projected. One, two, three, please. Then the Lord said unto me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. The power of correct perception. Hallelujah. Many, many people have been limited in life, in business, in ministry, in career, not necessarily because of the wrongdoings as far as adhering to the principles of growth is concerned, but that intrinsically there is something wrong with their understanding, their orientation, and their perception. Hallelujah. That the reality that is before you is as defined by your mindset. The reality that is before you is as defined by your orientation. Two people can be in a situation, perhaps a challenging situation, and for one person, he sees it as an opportunity to rise, to thrive. I hope you know that the same wind connecting to the flow of the teachings we've had, the same wind that blows on the palm tree blows on every other tree. It does not uniquely isolate the palm tree. No. No. When the wind blows, it has no prejudices or biases. Every tree that is before the wind gets affected by the wind. What they define by the movement of the wind is left to their perception. But as for the wind, it will move. Are we together now? Yes. The wind moves on the mango tree like it moves on the palm tree. The wind moves on the shrubs like it moves on the established trees. You will think the size of the tree should, should create some kind of empathy. When the wind moves, it moves. The survival of the trees does not depend on whether the wind comes or not. They have been able to redefine a strategy for survival. The power of accurate perception. There are people today, the greatest miracle happened to their lives and in their lives and from their lives because of the challenges they went through. Are we together? A ministry was birthed out of a woman's many years of not having a child, for instance. She would have lived in regret and pain, attracting sympathy from across the nations. But she decided to redefine. Listen, it is not what happens to you that hurts you. It's the meaning you give to it. Why does one million excite you today and frustrate you tomorrow? It was always one million. Your perception was lower than one million, so it was a miracle. When your perception rose higher than one million, it became a source of frustration. You need more. You need a higher dimension of that money. So one million no longer blesses you. Whereas when you were looking up to it, it was a miracle. You see that now? My life changed when I discovered that if you can change your perception. If I call someone now and I tell you I just sent one million naira to your account. You start laughing. Then I say, April fool. Now hold on, hold on. Even if I did not say April fool and I was lying, you were still happy. Because you trusted what I was saying. Even without seeing the alert. Look at the vacillations in your mood. And yet the truth is I never even sent anything. Don't even have your account number. But I said something to you that affected your interpretation. Are we together now? And you became happy. And as soon as you found out I was joking, it changed. Your destiny is at the mercy of your perception even beyond the wind that blows. The wind that blows, blows on everybody. The challenges you are facing is not personal to you. It's just a limited mindset that makes you think you are uniquely isolated for suffering. It's a lie. You are not the first to look for money. You are not the first to look for land. Hello? <laughs> you are not the first to trust God for grace to scale your reputation. It's a reality and a challenge that befalls all men who seek growth. But what distinguishes failures and those who thrive and excel is their perception and when your perception is carved out of scripture it becomes an anchor you see because 
it takes a while for results to happen. Did you hear what I said? The day a woman gets pregnant is not the day she gives birth. No matter how healthy she is. So when you see a woman who is one month pregnant, her inability to give birth is not a health issue. It's a process issue. You don't pray and say, Madam, eat well, eat better. There are times all you are doing is right. All you need to do is to redefine your perception and sustain the staying power. Listen. Are we together? What is your interpretation of failure? Who called it failure? It matters who feeds your interpretation. When man came in Adam in, in, in uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us, as far as we know and as far as we read, that they never heard anyone speak to them. The first person who framed the understanding of Adam was God himself. And what he had was be fruitful. That was the perception he had. But when the serpent came, the serpent came to Eve and said, the first thing I want to know is what God told you. I will have to depend on what he has said to alter your perception. If I cannot find out what God has said, it becomes difficult to deceive you. He says, I fear less as Satan beguiled Eve. You see that now? And he said, so what has God told you? We may freely eat of all the trees except this one. The day we eat, we will die. He said, aha. Uh -huh. Don't you think God may be hiding something from you? He knows that when you eat, your eyes will be open. You will be as the God, knowing good and evil. The Bible says, when the woman saw, saw, her perception became altered. Her perception changed. She did not see value in obedience again. She did not see value in honoring the words of God again. The Bible says when she saw that it was good for food and it was desired to make a man wise, her action was in honor to her perception. There are many of you, what you are binding today was the answer to your prayer. It's just that your perception has not yet been put together. Are we together? You prayed and said, God lift me. And in doing so, he took you. How do you think Joseph was going to become a prime minister? If God described the detail for Joseph on how he would become a prime minister, he would reject every part of that detail. Is that true? So the way God works is that he does not tell you how you will get there. He only gives you the end point so that you will know that the end is the manifestation of God's glory. But you will have to depend on him for every work. How do you call throwing a man into a well as advancement? How do you call selling a man by his brothers as progress? If I were Joseph's pastor, right from the well, I would be binding the spirit and say, Lord, let this boy return back to his father's house. Yet I will be aborting the destiny of a great man. The power of accurate perception. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I thought you would say, for thou remove me. For thou art with me. Why did you come to join me there? Isn't it more profitable to remove me? Ask the three Hebrew boys. If they were removed from the fire arbitrarily, there would be no miracle. The miracle was because they were in the fire, not because they were delivered. The miracle was because they were in the fire, not because they were delivered. The if they avoided the fire, it will not be miracle enough. Not enough for the king to change his decree. Are we together? Many believers don't know how their answer looks like. This is the reason why we pray without profit. Because many believers have not been trained to understand how God answers prayers. Hmm. The Bible tells us, Reverend Sam, remember I'm, I'm not, it's a charge. It's a charge and we'll wrap up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up the conference so you've had enough. You've been here from morning. So let me just do my final charge. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible tells us that they locked Peter in a prison and bound him hand and feet. Are we together now? And then the Bible says the church said, let's come together and pray. Watch this. Because the purposes of God needed to make progress. 
And they were praying. And the Bible tells us that it pleased Herod to vex certain Jews. After they beheaded James, he saw that it pleased them. And he kept Peter that after the Passover, he will hand them to the people. Then the Bible says in verse 5 or 6, he said, But prayer was made by the church unto God for him. In honor and in response to that prayer, an angel comes. And the Bible says that angel brought deliverance for Peter. But the most disturbing part of that scripture is that after Peter escaped and finally got to the door where they were praying, he now knocked the door and said, I have arrived. They opened the door and saw him and said, no, they thought it was his angel and closed the door back and kept praying. Perception. You prayed and said, God, honor me. And he sent you to a company with unfavorable conditions. Look beyond the conditions. That is where your destiny helper will meet you. Pharaoh would never have met Joseph in the house of his father. No. There was no connection. In fact, it was even through Joseph that Jacob and all his other sons were redeemed. Listen, this is a lesson. Perception. So that you can rejoice in the Lord always, even when it does not make sense. You may be owing the rent, but that pressure was mounted upon your spirit to help you study finances once and for all. So that you don't embarrass yourself at a transcontinental level. From that level, you can study and make up your mind. There is a healthy pressure that life needs to come. Pain can be a gift. You must learn to receive the gift of pain. You don't like what I'm saying? Like it all. If it is growth that you desire. An angel appears to Mary, Reverend Sam, and says, you are highly favored. I have studied the life of Mary carefully. I do not find anything there that represents favor by my definition. If an angel from God comes to tell you you are highly favored, somebody should die who is your enemy. Somebody should give you a gift. The next thing that surrounded that woman was trouble. First, Joseph said, I've been hearing that you are pregnant and I'm innocent. And because of that, you and whatever rabbi, <laughs> you are about to lose your marriage. And then every time you're about to lose your marriage, what you are hearing is you are highly favored. Not just favored. What is the favor and the trouble that came? And then after enduring that pregnancy, about to give birth, they will not even let you give birth to your child in peace. Then to hear that Herod is looking for you and your child. Describe for me using spiritual intelligence what is favorable about that situation. And even after Jesus was born, there was no special honor anywhere that was given to Mary that showed that it was favor. That one day Jesus put a triumphant entry and said, today I want to introduce the woman that suffered. You don't have no idea. Yet the Bible says she favor. She was even part of the 120 that had to endure to receive the Holy Ghost. No special treatment. The same Holy Ghost that came and got her pregnant. She had to join the other people to wait. Perception. Have you been casting your miracle away? Have you been prolonging pain because you do not have the eye in the spirit to see grace when it comes? Are we together now? This was the problem with the wife of the sons of the prophet. The Bible tells us that in the house, Reverend Sam, it says in the dwelling of the wise, there are two things you will always find. Treasure and oil. Treasure is flamboyant, attractive, you can see it. But the oil is why the treasure remains. And when the treasure had depleted in that woman's house, there was still oil left. And the woman said, I have nothing. This was her perception. I have nothing. I consider my son as something, not knowing it was the oil that brought him. I consider all my estates as something. They all left. But in the house of the wise, there are treasures and there is oil. Even when the treasures deplete, your confidence is that. And you see, the treasure is usually in golden vessels, but the oil is in earthen vessels. So if you are asked to choose, the treasure looks more attractive and glorious than the oil. Yet the oil is why the treasure comes. Are we together? 
And the Bible says she went to the prophet. And the prophet said, you, you said your husband was a prophet. If it is true that that man was a prophet, it means he had the wisdom of God. Go and check your house. It, it can't be that there is nothing. It's a lie. The problem is your perception. If it is true that he was a prophet, there must be oil in that house. I agree that the treasure has gone in exchange for the debt, but there must be oil. And she said, it's true, but it's small. He said, no, go and borrow vessels. The size of the oil is a description of your mindset. You don't borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. And he said, in borrowing, borrow not a few. Expand your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Go and borrow vessels. Listen, listen. To borrow vessels, he said, borrow not a few. Go and borrow vessels. The oil is not small. It's because administrative excellence has not been added to the oil. That's why you've not seen what it can do. Go and, bear, and borrow vessels. It's because financial intelligence has not been added to your prophetic gift. That's why you cannot see the excellence that comes from it. For as long as your oil is in a small container, limited by your mindset, your thinking, and your perception, the oil that can save nations will be hiding in the room of a woman. There was nothing the prophet gave her. He only showed her how to see well. Can I tell you the truth? That singing ability God put within you, it still has the power to feed you, feed your generation and serve the purposes of the kingdom. But the reason is because if you don't train your spirit to see well, you will keep throwing out of your life through disdain something that is another person's prayer point. Most of the things we use today for the glory of God, we always had it within us. It didn't just come. It was primed by correcting your perception. There are many noisemakers who are preachers, but they are living profitless lives because their perception. They've not been able to coordinate their energy to focus it well so that it brings them increase and lifts them. What seest thou? He said the rod of an almond tree. What did you call the job loss? I am finished. Your definition has given it a meaning that has pegged you. And for 10 years, you will remain there. But for another person, he looks at it and says, could this be how my next testimony is about to come? He sees the job loss as the end of a season and the beginning of another. And instead of crying, he begins to give praise while he waits for what... Three people were relieved of their job, but one person would praise and celebrate God into the next season and another would be attracting sympathy in pain. The prayer you need to pray if you really want to rise is for God to grant you a changed perception. I tell you sincerely, right from when I was in Zaria, I refused to see Zaria. Zaria came out of my mind years ago. Perception has an energy it has an attracting power. It will draw people to your life that reflect your limitation. You can be in a limited place, but because your perception is global, kingdom, excellence, superior, you will mysteriously draw people that reflect your growth and your excellence. This is true. Religion and psychology both agree on this. That there is an energy that propels out of the health of your thinking and can draw to your life people conditions and resources consistent with your belief and your perceptions are we learning what seest thou i see the rod of an almond tree let me reduce my points from three to two i will just give us one more and we'll pray the final principle and I believe that this beautifully ties up everything you probably have learned through this conference and even through today is the power of the prophetic. Let me show you something about the prophetic advantage that if not introduced in the life of a man, all factors can be right, but you will still fail. The prophetic has such superior significance in helping us become, in helping us thrive, in helping us remain. Are you ready for this? Mark 11, please. We've been talking about trees today. There is a kind of tree I want you to look at. Mark chapter 11. 
Oh, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. For sake of time, I want us to start from verse 20. I will give you the story. So Jesus is hungry. And the Bible tells us that he was hungry at a time and a season where it was not the time for figs. But Jesus sees a fig tree. We are talking trees now. He shall be like a tree. So let's examine one kind of tree. This tree was healthy, connected to the root. This tree had leaves, meaning the system of transferring nutrients was working. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this tree. The leaves were green. Come on, agriculturists, talk to me. When leaves are green, it's a sign of health. Yet, fruits did not come. And when Jesus saw it, you would think Jesus would be compassionate to say every factor is in place. Let's give it time. He cursed it immediately. I read that scripture for many years and I didn't. The faith part is not what. Why did Jesus have to curse that tree? It seemed harsh to me. At least the Bible says it was not the time of figs. Ah, until I read the fact that the Bible says he shall be like a tree. If it is planted by the riverside, there are expectations. The Bible says it yields its fruit in season. Whose leaf does not wither. It does not stop there. Then he says whatsoever he does. There is a possibility on that tree that even though it is not its season. Because of the kind of advantage it was introduced to. It should still produce. Are we together now? The Bible respects seasons. But it also tells you that because life operates by times and seasons. There are times that the factors are against you. You will need something to help accelerate you and superimpose even beyond seasons. In, in John chapter 5, it was a particular season the angel came to steer the water. You had to be patient for the season to come. It was that once a year patience that made the man's trouble get to 38 years. When Jesus came, now is if I leave this man until the next season, I can do something. I have dominion over seasons. And the Bible says right there and then, it was not yet the season for the angel to steer the water, yet because Jesus came. So Jesus was saying, my presence around that fig tree should create an effect beyond the seasons. The fact that I drew close to that tree, don't give me the excuse of agriculture again. If you understand the value of my presence, the rod of Aaron bordered in 24 hours it was not corrected to the root it failed every agricultural principle but because the presence factor came it vetoed explanations and still produced seasons are powerful but do not peg your growth to only seasons god starts by teaching you the rudiments of growth but later he takes you to the inner chambers of the spirit and says let me show you what can distinguish you in life and in destiny he comes to the tree and says i demand of you fruit the effect of my presence should produce extraordinary results are we together hmm. the prophetic is powerful so the rod of aaron number one that it is rod. You know what makes a thing rod? Rod means it has been detached from the root for a long time. For anything to become a rod means you have harvested it out of the root. Are we together? And like Pastor Jerry was sharing, when from a natural standpoint, when a thing is detached, for whatever reason, it may not even be the making of the tree. It was people that came and caught it. 
The tree did not have power. Have you read the scripture that says, deliver me from those who are more powerful than me? There are times that the factors are beyond your control. It is not carelessness. It is just that there are sentiments, tribal, racial sentiments. You can get into an office. You are qualified. You are excellent. You are exceptional. But simply on account of your faith, someone will stand up and beat my chest and say, you can be as learned as you want. For as long as I am here, you will not rise. You need to live long enough to know that the wickedness factor on earth is significant enough for you to be aware of it. That the whole world lies in wickedness. And because of that, it can interrupt the natural pace of how things should have been. There are times that everything is right. But simply because this is the world of men whose potentials are tampered by the presence of demons and systems and structures that consistently fight the program of God. Jesus brought the presence factor to the tree. Yet the tree could not see that there is an advantage you have beyond just the agricultural provisions and Jesus cursed it and left when he cursed it the Bible says by the next day when they came they found that tree withered question if you were not there when Jesus was cursing the tree you would come and stand in front of that tree and be surprised what was wrong that the tree dried the tree was still connected the wind did not come the, it was not lack of rain. The leaves were still green and suddenly turned overnight. Please look at me. Even when winds blow, my apologies for this. Please forgive me. Are we together? Even when winds blow, someone help me with this one of the ushers or anyone. Listen to me. Even deterioration by natural means allows for time. But when your tree withers overnight, it was supernaturally manipulated by any spirit are we together when your favor dries up overnight that is not business sense again you need to step out and wear that prophetic regalia something is wrong here are we together there are times in your life you will see occurrences that do not subscribe to the natural law of success or the natural law of failure you will see factors that are, be, you will know that there are hands engineering tragedies at an accelerated rate. The natural course of life is that people should live a useful life and die in old age. By the time three of your destiny helpers die in one week, you need to remove your, it's not brain work again. You need a prophetic advantage. Something is tampering with the natural course of my growth. I hope you believe this. There are times that everything can be right. In John chapter 21, Peter went to go and fish. You talk of flourishing, professionalism was in Peter. He was a professional fisherman. He had the boat, the right tool. He had the net, the right tool. He was at the sea, the right place. All the factors were there, yet he did not catch fish. And yet the fish was in that river. My question is who took away the fish? Because the fish that later came was still in that river. So that same business, there is still profit in it. Why is it not coming to you? Everything is there. The store is there. The excellence is there. Yet he did not catch fish. When Jesus showed up, he said, little children, have you any catch? He said, we've been toiling. No. He said, cast your net to the right side. And the Bible says, as they obeyed that prophetic instruction, there was, like we call it, a net breaking, boat sinking, catch of fish. And Peter saw that and he said, depart from me. You are not a human being. Whoever you are, he said, this has to be Jesus. Only him can produce this. Let me tell you the truth. I wish I would tell you that every result you will get in your life will be as a product of productivity alone will be a product of excellence and intelligence. Don't get me wrong. Every factor you have been taught stands valid. 
but because you are living in the world that is not all scientific you are living in a world that is not all intellectual you are living in a world that was first spiritual before it imported all these varieties of things in all you're getting if you stop at the realm of brain in all you're getting if you stop at the realm of just productivity physically you will be cheated in many ways in life this is why god sent us here i'm saying this because shortly we'll be speaking over your life listen to me i compare the rod of aaron and i compare the tree that is in mark 11. all i see is injustice in my opinion how does a rod not planted how does a rod that does not even have any possibility most likely it must have been painted dead but simply because it was kept in the presence versus a tree that had its root and everything fine i'm saying this because if you don't understand this you will be annoyed with many people's results you will see the gaps and before those gaps are closed you will still see results and the results would defy many explanations i can tell you some of them have quietly smuggled themselves through prophetic conferences like this and while they are still learning the excellence while they are still learning productivity they were foolish enough to shout amen to a prophetic word that came from a man of god and as they shouted amen while they were putting other factors in place that prophecy began to reprogram possibilities within their space as powerful as Jesus is and was, there were three prophets that played a role in his life for him to actually complete his assignment. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist. Jesus, the word incarnate. Did he pray? Yes. Did he fast? Yes. Did he study? Yes. Was he under the scribes for learning? Yes. You would check all the lists, yet you would have failed woefully. And even with all that prophetic, he almost aborted destiny. If all you have is an intelligent mind, then there will be a very painful lesson you will learn as you sojourn this wicked world. If all you have is a good heart, that is profitable but not enough for you to flourish. Let me tell you the truth flourishing and thriving is proof of mastery that you have learned all the laws that keep things in place ladies and gentlemen i'm looking at people today who right from the start of this conference listened attentively to speaker after speaker intelligent facilitator after another and most of you have learned all kinds of phenomenal principles that stand true eternally because they are derived from the truth of scripture but I bring you a dimension to add to all that you have heard. The prophetic is a mysterious advantage. Mysterious advantage. Did you hear what I said? Mysterious advantage. An advantage whose explanation does not relate with logic. I am a product of prophecy. I know what prophecy can do. I have seen what it has done to people's lives. If it were by the natural course of life, some of us would be far behind where we are today. Prophecy is an accelerator. It can push men. It can make things become. It can make things happen. I'm saying this because as we wrap up in the next one or two minutes, we're going to take time to pray, even if it's just three minutes. I want you to cry. Lord, my beast, I've learned the principles. Listen, you can put the store and employ staff, but only God brings customers. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Is that in your Bible? He said it is vain to wake up early. What is wrong with waking up early? Waking up early is a principle of diligence, but it is still vain to wake up early. What is sleeping in the night? That is the most graphic representation of diligence when you wake up in the night. He says, yet you will still eat the bread of sorrow for waking up early. The man who wakes up early in the morning and sleep late in the night, that should be the most prosperous person. Unfortunately, there are factors beyond your control. 
Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. So based on your diligence, there are certain customers who should come based on the natural course of diligence. Except for the fact that because you have vowed that your money will promote the kingdom. When you were praying, it was not only God that had you, Satan had you too. And said, what did you say your money would do next year for advanced conference? That souls will be won, destinies will be changed, and while they are coming. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.